Hey Nerdy Knitters! In this video we're going to look at three different ways for adding a stitch pattern to a shawl. We're going to use a top-down triangle shawl in our demonstration, but really it will work with any type of shawl construction. There's three different ways you can add them and we'll look at each of them in this video. But before we do, I just want to say hey, I'm Tanya here at Nerdy Knitting. I'm a certified knitting instructor and a knitwear designer and my goal is to help you become a confident, adventurous knitter. You'll find timestamp links and anything we might mention in the video down below in the video description box. Now before we look at the three different ways you can add a stitch pattern, usually a lace pattern, but it doesn't have to be. We're going to use lace in our example today. The first thing you need to do is get some kind of charting software. Even if it's just graph paper and a pencil, something you can chart on. It's really important because that's really the best way to try to get stitch patterns into the shape of the shawl you want to work on. So there are some free options. You can use Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. Even that would work just fine. I've used Stitch Fiddle. That one does have a small yearly fee you can pay, but it's not necessary. They have a free option too, and it works perfectly fine. I use a paid option now. Since I'm a designer, it just made more sense to have something that I could download and use all the time. It's called Stitch Mastery. There's also a few other options available. Chartminder and Knitbird are two options that I've found. I don't have any experience with them. But any of these, you just want to get one of these programs, give them a try because it just will make, it'll make it so much easier to use a chart to really get a good idea of how those stitch patterns are going to fit into the shawl or whatever it is that you're working on. These three methods really can apply to any garment. We're just using them for shawls today. Now the first thing you want to do when you have your charting software and you've had some time to play around with it is to chart out the shape of the shawl you're going to make. Like this chart right here. This is if you were going to chart out a top-down triangle shawl, this is what it would look like. You can see along each edge, it's got garter stitch, three stitches of garter stitch. Right in the middle is that center spine stitch. And then the body of the shawl is those two triangles. You start with just one stitch and then you're increasing along each edge. So you get four increases every right side row. And that gives us the shape of a top-down triangle shawl. I know this chart can seem a little confusing if you've never seen this shawl construction charted out before. Sometimes they're just often worked in garter stitch with something really simple that doesn't require a chart. But this is what a chart would look like. Now, those gray boxes, those are what we refer to as a no stitch. That means there's, they're basically a placeholder for stitches that will be added eventually. If we were to cut them right out and then paste that together, it would actually look more like a little shawl. But those gray boxes are just placeholders. They don't mean anything. They're just there until those stitches are finally added. Now, once you've played with your software and you've got that shawl construction mapped out, and remember, we're going to use the top-down shawl today, but this will work for any shawl construction. If you have another shawl construction you want to try this with, make a chart of that construction method and then use one of these methods to add a lace or another stitch pattern to it. Now, the first way to add a stitch pattern to a shawl is to wait until you have enough stitches to accommodate one full repeat of the stitch pattern. Now, if you look at this example here, I've only taken half of that top-down triangle shawl. You can see one garter edge and then the spine stitch over there on the left side because it's just going to be a duplicate for the other side. It would just, it was easier to map it out this way. So the red box shows the repeat of the pattern, but we're waiting and not adding more repeats until we have enough stitches to accommodate each repeat. The red box shows the stitch pattern repeat itself. I just repeated it in that central panel until I had enough stitches across to accommodate more repeats of that pattern. So that's the easiest method. You'll just keep working your background stitch, whether it's stockinette, garter, or something else, until you have enough stitches in that space to accommodate another repeat of that pattern. But if you don't like all that empty space, you can see on each side, there's quite a lot of just plain stockinette in there. You can do the second me method, which is fill in with your basic pattern, but then add in partial repeats of the stitch pattern where they'll fit. Now this screen recording shows how I did that. I would copy just a few stitches of the pattern and then paste it in in the same spot where it would fit below and then repeated that on the other side. And then I still had more space I could fill in so I copied the row underneath that, pasted it down underneath. And you just have to pay attention to where those stitches fit. Make sure they're lining up properly. This is kind of a tedious process but you can see how it fills in. The one thing you want to pay attention to, especially in this instance, is don't confuse the yarn overs for the lace 
stitch pattern with the yarn overs you're using to create the shape of your shawl. It can be very simple to, to look at a yarn over at the edge and think that it's part of the stitch pattern repeat when really it is part of what's constructing the shape of your shawl. So you want to be aware of whatever increase you're using that it stays outside of that boundary. And then you would just continue this process, but you would stop and look and add in as much of that pattern as you could and fill in some of that empty space. One other thing to pay attention to is the matching yarn overs and decreases in your stitch pattern. Wherever you have a yarn over, you have to have a matching decrease to maintain the stitch count for that stitch repeat. So if you're copying and pasting and you copy a yarn over, but you don't copy its paired decrease, then you're going to be adding an extra stitch where you didn't intend to. So just pay attention to that. Now, before we get to our last method, if you have any comments or questions about adding stitch patterns to your shawls, leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Now, the last method would be the overall stitch pattern. You want as many stitches from your lace stitch pattern or whatever it is to be in the body of the shawl. The easiest way to do this is to chart that out first, chart out that repeat. If you look here, I just took that basic stitch pattern and I just filled the whole chart with it first. And then what you'll do is sort of reverse engineer this. You're going to put the shape of your shawl over the stitch pattern and just delete those extra spaces that you don't need. So this is where you have to understand the construction of the particular shawl that you're working on because you're going to need to know how to do that to remove the stitches. The first thing to do is look at the very center. Where do you want that stitch pattern to be centered? So once you find the center of that pattern, you'll grab that gray no stitch and you're going to remove the stitches that are around it. And for our triangle shawl construction, that starts with three stitches. We've got our one knit stitch and then a yarn over at each side. So I'm charting that right over the stitch pattern. And then the wrong side row, it's three stitches. And then you go back and with this particular pattern, I, you just remove one less stitch from each, each side. And then you look at what's left and you have to make a decision about what's there. You need to add your shaping for the shawl shape itself. As you can see here, I'm gonna have to remove those stitches because I need to put in yarn overs for the shawl shape. So I'm not gonna be able to keep that, that particular repeat of the pattern. So I have to remove those. This is also a slightly tedious process, but for a full all over lace pattern or any other pattern, this is really the, I think it's the easiest way to add it in. There, that's another two rows, but I still have to add the shaping for the shawl itself and that there's not enough stitches to accommodate that yet. So I have to replace the stitch pattern here. This is the important thing to remember that your, your shawl shape has to come first and then the stitch pattern can be added in after. Now here we go, in this section, it looks like we can start getting some of that shape right in there, but you'd have to make a decision right here. You can see you're working double yarn overs right there. So you'd have to decide, do you want to keep those double yarn overs or if you decide to remove the lace stitch yarn over, you have to remove the decrease as well, but you could keep the central decrease and the yarn over on either side just fine. But it really, it's up to you whether you wanna keep that or not. And as you can see, you just continue this process, removing those stitches and adding in the yarn overs or whatever increase you're using to create the shawl shape. The biggest thing to remember with that one is remembering which yarn overs are which, the ones that shape the shawl and the ones that are in the stitch pattern and to differentiate between the two. Another thing to remember when you're working these kind of patterns is to balance your stitch patterns. All of that means is if you have, say you have two purl stitches on one side of the pattern and then you've got the pattern worked across the row, you want two purl stitches at the other end to balance with those first two. If you look at this example here, this is another simple lace stitch pattern. The red box shows you the repeat. You would work that red box right across all of your multiple of six stitches. And then right at the end, you'd have one more purl stitch that helps to balance the purl stitches used at the other end. Now, if we were to chart out all of the repeats, here's a small section, you would just do it like that. You can see now as it's worked across the row that it looks balanced because we've added that other section of purl stitches right at the end. So you just wanna remember that as you're working your lace stitch pattern into your shawl. 
that's really all there is to it. You want to get some kind of charting software or graph paper, find a stitch pattern you like, and then use one of these methods. You can either wait until you have enough stitches to accommodate each repeat. You can add in partial repeats in there as well. Or if you're really feeling ambitious, chart out a big section of the pattern and then put your shape for your shawl over the top to get as much of those pattern stitches in there as possible. If you have any questions about how to do any of these steps, be sure to leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. If you like to get nerdy with your knitting, be sure to subscribe.